Hello everyone. Um, so Dandanaka series edition 15 is getting ready. So I was contemplating, Chari, what can I do? What what can I talk about uh, in this Dandanaka series? And um, I should tell you, I looked into various things. I researched on various topics as to what I can talk to you about in this session. But my heart always went back to um, something that energizes me from inside. For the last many years, I had been a practitioner of yoga, if not in the very detailed form. Yes, I had been going to yoga uh, for, you know, some kind of uh, peace inside me. But over the last few years, I should say for the last four or five years, I had started to see what are the stories behind all these yogic poses that we are doing. And after doing that, it was a beautiful experience for me because keeping in mind the stories and then trying to do uh, the yoga poses, meditating on the characters on which the stories was based on was very healing for me. And I thought that is why these yoga stories will have to be shared with all the people. And uh, there are many articles about this. Uh, but I thought, you know, telling stories face to face is also very nice, which is why this. So I thought this Dandanaka series, I will do uh, not one, but uh, it will be many, a series of stories that I'll be telling you because there are beautiful, simple poses in yoga that you do every day. And that has got such deep rooted meaning inside. And when you're going to take these stories inside and you do the yoga poses and then contemplate on the stories, you will see the results for yourself. And that is why probably they said yoga is a way of life. So the first story for you all, I'm going to start with the story and then ask you which yoga pose I'm going to talk about. Let me see if you can guess it. Hmm? So now this story goes back to very, 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 very long time ago. Like in myths, when the gods and the goddesses came down to earth. It was those time, there was this king called Daksha and his wife. Now the king's wife longed for a daughter. And somebody advised them to meditate upon Adi Parashakti. And yes, they did. The king and the queen renounced the kingly all the kingdom pleasures and they went to the forest and meditated upon Adi Parashakti. And of course, yes, Adi Parashakti, very pleased by the devotion, came down and asked them what they needed. And the queen, without a thought, said, I need a daughter just like you. So be it, she said. But then, if I have to come as a daughter, I will have to tell you, the moment I feel insulted or disrespected, I will get back to whoever I was. I will go back to the celestial word, said she. Daksha and the queen were very happy and they were so happy to know that the goddess herself had decided to be born as their child. And after some time, this beautiful baby girl was born to Daksha and his queen. Daksha himself was the son of Brahma. He is called the Daksha Pratapati, Prajapati. And so, the princess, the little princess also got the name Dakshayani. And now when Dakshayani grew, she listened to the tales of Shiva, told by sage Narada. And without her knowledge, there was a deep sense of attachment that was growing inside her heart to this Shiva that she longed to see. Who is he? Why is he known by so many names? And why is he such a different person from anybody else that I'm seeing? The curiosity just built so much eagerness in her to go and meet Shiva. And without her knowledge, she fell in love with the mighty Shiva, the stories of whom she heard from sage Narada. Well, that was what Brahma's decision for Sati. He decided the fate of Sati. He wrote that Sati will be a great devotee of Shiva 
and get married to Shiva. Well, is it even possible to marry somebody who is wandering in the forests? Somebody who is wandering in the graveyard? He is somebody who carries a bowl in his hand and asking for bhiksha everywhere? And now Sati decided to go and win the heart of Shiva. She did. She went and she undertook a very strong penance. She renounced everything. She stopped eating for ages. She stopped eating. She didn't eat anything. Some days she just lived on one leaf as a source of nourishment and at some point even that was stopped. Shiva was deeply pleased by her devotion and came down and asked her, What do you want? And Sati said, I just want to be next to you. I want to be your wife. Take me as your wife. And Shiva agreed immediately. Well, Sati was very happy and she went back to her house, her palace, where King Daksha was ruling and waiting for Sati to come back so that he could arrange a swayamvaram not with Shiva, but with other kings. And when Sati came and announced that the bridegroom is ready, it is none other than Shiva, Daksha was not very happy. That guy who roams around in the graveyard, that guy who roams around like a fool with ashes smeared all over his body, the one with the matted hair and one who wears tiger skin for a dress, my daughter's husband. Daksha could not think beyond that. To him, he was the king and Dakshayani was his princess. But Sati was very strong and the marriage did happen. But then Daksha decided to renounce Sati after that. I would not want to be called as the son-in-law of that mad, uh, the father-in-law of that mad fellow is what he thought. Ha! And that is why when he decided to perform a very great yajna, calling all the celestial beings, the gods and the devas, he refused to call his own daughter and son-in-law. He refused to invite his own daughter and son-in-law. And Sati came to know about this great yajna that her, her father was organizing through some other sources and she was in shock. But then the daughter in her wanted to go and attend the yajna ritual. When she went to Shiva and said, I would like to go, Shiva said, I don't think you should be going anywhere uninvited. It is not good for you, Sati. But then, it was the daughter who was talking to Shiva and not Sati and the Shiva's wife. Finally, Shiva said, if you really wanted to go, you may, but don't expect me to come. Sati was indeed a little cross with her husband for not accompanying her. But when she went there to the Yajna, the way Daksha treated her angered her beyond belief. He started screaming loudly at Sati, Who asked you to come here? You, the, the wife of that mad fellow, the one who roams in the graveyard, has no right to enter this beautiful yajna that is happening in my house. This is a place where all the great beings are invited and not people like you. Angry. Sati tried to explain to Daksha how great her Shiva was. But Daksha, the ego-headed father, was not ready to listen. Accepting failure and defeat and embarrassment, Sati cursed Daksha that this will lead to the destruction of Daksha and taking the form of Adi Parashakti, she jumped into the fire and renounced her life. A story full of love and romance ended in great pathos. When Shiva heard the news of Sati's death, he was grief stricken and he just did not know what to do. He got up and he did the Thandava dance because of which the whole world shook. The three worlds shook. 
タッタリタタカタリタタカタリタタタンデッディミタディミディミタディミディミタタタイタタリタタタンデッディミタタタイタタリタタカタリタタタリタタタン And everybody didn't know what to do. In that anger, he just took out two of his locks and he just threw them, and from that arose Virabhadra and Badrakal. He ordered them to head straight to Daksha's sacrifice and spoil the sacrifice and kill Daksha immediately. Well, Virabhadra, born out of Shiva, and Badrakali, born out of Shiva, went straight to Daksha's sacrifice. And there Daksha was asking for Vishnu to protect him. And they say there was a great war that happened between Virabhadra and Mahavishnu himself. And of course, the fate was that Daksha had to be killed. Vishnu lost the war and accepted defeat. And Virabhadra proceeded towards Daksha. And they say Daksha was killed. His head was cut off by Virabhadra. And the sacrifice was spoiled. Well, after which Daksha realized his mistake and his head was replaced by a goat's head the story ends there but a beautiful story of devotion love ends with such grief well what asana do you think is this story to con- is this story connected with if you still have not got it it is the most famous veerabhadrasana that we do in yoga Do you remember the three poses, the Veerabhadrasana, one, two and three poses that we do? It says that the first pose signifies Veerabhadra getting ready to go to Daksha's sacrifice spot. The second pose is when he stands and he warns looking at his enemies. He warns them that I am ready with my sword. I am here to just... Do this. I'm going to undo all the things that you have done. I'm going to spoil this sacrifice. Veerabhadra announces to his enemies. And the third pose is when he just slays them off. Well, that is what Veerabhadrasana is. But how would you contemplate this? How would you connect this with yourself? You know, Veerabhadrasana is also called the warrior pose. Because Veerabhadra was a great warrior who... who went and he attacked he fought with vishnu himself and then he went over to kill the evil that prevailed in this world well as human beings we also have evil forces that we have to face every day it could be anything it could be something that is inside your mind that is troubling you so much or it could be something that you will have to get rid of so that you could move ahead towards the betterment and the good in your life every time you will have to face that when every time when you will have to face that something that you will have to destroy and move forward towards the better path remember this warrior every time you do this veerabhadrasana think of that one thing that you would want to destroy is it the laziness in you is it the anger in you or is it something else that you would want to get rid of as you do the veerabhadrasana pose think that you are the warrior get ready look at that thing that you want to destroy and give it a warning saying that i'm going to destroy you today you are not going to be next to me any time anywhere And as you do the third Veerabhadrasana pose, you slay it. Try practicing Veerabhadrasana with this story in your mind. And I'm telling you, wonders will happen. Thank you so much for watching Dandanaka series edition 15. This is Lavanya Prasad signing off. But I thought I will also tell more stories. Uh, about these yoga courses 
uh, in the days to come i will be recording and uploading one story each day june 21st is yoga day i have also been telling yoga stories to my yoga group of people that i practice along with for almost 3 uh, years now this is going to be the fourth year i thought okay since i st- share stories with them there every time on yoga day why not share with you all too so i hope you will keep this beautiful story in your mind as you do virabhadrasana and slay all the evil things all the things that is hindering you from proceeding towards the goodness in life a very very happy happy day to you all thank you so much for watching if you think this is uh, interesting i request you to consider subscribing to my channel and also possibly share this with people who you think might enjoy this video ta ta